The struggle for LGBTQ rights has been long and hard and arduous with lots of struggle and lots of sacrifice. There's been many step forwards and achievements, but there's still a long way to go. That particularly goes for trans people and for trans rights. We're in the middle of a vicious anti-trans backlash. So I'm gonna to talk to the head of Stonewall, Ruth Hunt, who's been absolutely determined about fighting for trans rights and taking on the anti-trans backlash and transphobia. I wanna to talk to her about how we achieve that, how we stand with trans people and how far we've got to go. All this LGBTQ stuff, We've won the battle. It's all fine now. We live in this LGBTQ plus utopia. Yeah, it's never been better. So at Stonewall, we've always known changing the law is one thing, changing hearts and minds is quite another. Hate crime is as high as it's ever been. We also see that homophobic bullying is still rife in schools, biphobia, transphobia, etc. I think we also know that internationally things are pretty dire and going backwards. So everything feels really delicately held. Laws passed and we all kind of relaxed a bit but it hasn't actually taken hold enough for us to be secure yet. Trans issues, uh, trans rights, no issue I've written about or spoken about. And it's been a tumultuous few years politically. Yeah. Very polarised society. There was still nothing that has attracted the level of anger, fury, rage, denunciation. What is going on? Why, what is this anti-trans campaign which, frankly, attracts people from pretty disparate political perspectives? What's yes, it's, it's been quite unifying. It doesn't stop online. You know, the, the, the online is a manifestation of it, but when they walk down the street, they still get abuse. When they enter into a toilet, they're worried, etc., etc. And I think that it is a real indictment of our um, naivety that as a movement, we thought we were able to have a more adult conversation about these issues. And in fact, it, what, what it does is descend into name-calling and base dehumanising criticism. What is, has come as a real disappointment to us is the level of vitriol that is directed at individual trans people, misgendering them, refusing to acknowledge their own experience. It really reminds me of the times when I've been told I'm not a lesbian, you know, mm. you're not a lesbian because you haven't done anything lesbian yet, you know, how do you know? So this kind of mass speculation from everyone about someone's right to be who they are is astonishing to me. and. I have always believed and supported trans women and trans men because I'm a feminist, not despite the fact I'm a feminist. And I think that we are in danger of going backwards in some of the legislative gains and social gains we've got in this country. Describe what it's the research you've done by Stone, what it is like being trans in 2018 in Britain. Yeah, it's, I think it, it came as a surprise to us quite how bad it is. So we've seen significant levels of hate crime against trans people in the last year, high levels of bullying, high levels of self-harm and injury, um, high levels of suicidal ideation. There is a general anxiety across trans communities about how they are being treated. And that permeates into all sorts of other communities too. My partner was asked to leave the British Library women's toilets the other day by a group of schoolgirls wow. because she's got short hair and narrow hips. Wow. And they got the teacher in and said, there's a boy in our toilets. You cannot launch an attack on a group of people because they do not meet your expectations of gender and not expect it to have a wider impact on society in general. My heart breaks for trans communities who are absolutely under it right now and I think that it requires all their strength and determination to resist. So the government have proposed yep. uh, changing the Gender Recognition Act, supported by the Labour Party and other, other parties as well. Yep. What are we talking about in practice? So, lots of misinformation about this, and it's really quite boring. It's admin, okay? So <laughs> That's what we're talking about, it's admin. It's really, it's admin. Under the current act, you can self-identify. If you decide you want to be acknowledged and presenting mm -hmm. in another gender, the law protects you. If you want a new birth certificate, you have to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria, live in role for two years, submit a pack of evidence, a panel who you never meet who are not trans, decide whether you're man or woman enough, you pay a fee, you then get a gender recognition certificate, which means you can then get a birth certificate. Ireland have skipped that and said, you can just sign a form. It's a legally binding form, don't take the mech, don't change your mind, it's quite serious, but you don't have to go through all this. That is literally what the reform to the Gender Recognition Act is. To hear it said, anyone would think that what we're talking about is a complete redesign and realignment of the entire social order. We are medicalising trans people. We're basically saying you've got to have a mental illness before we'll take you seriously. You've got to be mad, but not too mad, because if you're too mad, we won't really let you do it. I mean, it's antiquated. 
It's putting unnecessary pressure on the NHS when it doesn't need to. The people who are trans who genuinely need medical support have to wait two years before they can get a look in. And people who are very happy as they are have to go through these loopholes. It is daft. Daft in the extreme. So you'd expect an attack on this. And you, we've had it. Daily Mail, The Sun, The Express, The Times, The Telegraph, the, the, the whole shebang. But there are some who say, as feminists, this is an attack on women. It is misogyny. It will redefine what it is to be a woman and eradicate the biological basis of the oppression of women. What do you say to that? I think that the, the reaction to is not new. I think it's just loud. I think that there has always been pockets of the feminist community who have not supported trans women. And I think that it is a, a shame that the feminist discourse that shows that transgender issues and trans women are actually part of the feminist movement, not contrary to the feminist movement, is not getting a louder hearing. Trans people are suffering as a result of this discourse and good conversations are not taking place. As a feminist, I think that I have more to learn about sexism from trans women than I ever thought possible. Trans men have more to teach me about the way in which gender roles play out. We force men to behave in a certain way. We force women to behave in a certain way. And that just makes the world a terrible place. And as a feminist, I have to believe that. So the argument of this faction of self-described feminists is yep. that what will happen is men who are predators will say they're a woman and they will invade women-only spaces, not least toilets, changing rooms, that kind of thing. What's interesting is that none of this has happened in Ireland. So all this talk about how any advance of rights for trans people is going to lead to a flurry of predatory, badly behaved men doing things differently hasn't been borne out in any of the countries where this has taken. Should we be talking more as a society about how we can stop men being evil? Yes, we should. Not at the expense of trans women. One of the other debates has been on all women's shortlists in the Labour Party. Labour are now announcing plans so that if you self-identify um, as a woman, then you can be in an all women's shortlist. And, and, and they focused on that. I mean, there were no trans MPs of 650. Yep. But what, what's your response? As, as an, a strictly a party political organisation at Stonewall, we, we are... Um, always interested in every party's challenges. All women shortlists are an interesting solution. I'd love to see more dykes being brought forward on the all women shortlist and more black people, but that's just an aside. They've always welcomed self-identification, so there's nothing new. They had a bit of a comms fail in how they talked about that, but when all women shortlists were introduced, they included trans women. It would be very unusual if a group who were selecting parliamentary candidates were unable to spot a man pretending to be a woman in order to get elected as a woman on an all-women shortlist. I also don't think we're quite at a stage where you are more likely to get elected as a woman than you are as a man. This speaks to the heart of a problem within some quarters about what makes a woman. And I think that is not going to be an issue that's resolved either through the prism of all women's shortlists or anything else. How um, severe have cuts to LGBTQ services been and you know, how under-resourced are LGBTQ services yeah. in this country? Massively. I don't know how the LGBT groups are surviving. They are running youth groups, drop-in centres, essential services, working with young people to keep them with their families, to keep them in school for pennies. In this country we are creating a time bomb of young LGBT people who will be increasingly ostracised mm -hmm. and, and left behind. That's even before we get into provision for older LGBT people who need mental health and alcohol and drug addiction support, who are often going into care homes where they are, have to go back in the closet. If they're experiencing dementia, they lose track of their life story. Older transgender people end up detransitioning because the care homes won't support them with their regime. So these are all quite complicated issues and a far cry from, can I get married? You know, can, can I get married was, was incredibly important. Now, can I stay with my partner, live in dignity, and please have a carer where I don't have to hide my Gay Times magazine is a whole different concern, I think. Why is mental distress and drug and alcohol abuse so much higher than um, LGBTQ people? Prejudice really messes with the head. Every day being told that you are not good enough and that you are different and you are other takes its toll. You have to actively dispute that in your own mind, and that's really difficult. It's one of the reasons I'm so concerned about the daily articles against trans people. That will have an impact. As a butch dyke, never seen anything positive in mainstream media. That has an impact. Add to that that we collectively meet 
and gather as a community around drink. The third is that the NHS doesn't respond to our health needs, it doesn't ask about sexual orientation or gender identity, doesn't take that into account when they're thinking about our mental health and well-being. So we're pretty much on our own. Do you think homophobia is basically very linked to sexism and misogyny? Homophobia and transphobia and biophobia is intrinsically linked to sexism and misogyny. Young people who are not LGBT but are thought to be mm. are the mo group most likely to experience homophobic bullying. So if you're gay and someone goes, are you gay? With enough support you turn around and go, yeah, mm. what's your problem? The kid who's good at maths and not really good at basketball who said, are you gay? And goes, no that bullying gets heightened. We know that men who don't behave like men and women who don't behave like women, whatever that means, are those who experience bullying. And that toxic masculinity creates a hostile environment for everyone. It is very striking that when we talk about the LGBTQ community, you know, the rainbow flag and all the rest of it, it is very dominated still by basically people like myself, you know, cis, gay, white, male, middle class, why is that and, and how can that be changed? Patriarchy is a powerful force, Owen. Lesbians in particular have always played a very, very strong role and often get written out of the story. And I think that we are in a position now where we're recognising that where we ignored some of the inequalities that exist within our own communities for the greater good, we're realising the damaging effect that had on our communities and the well-being of our communities. Mm -hmm. All our evidence says that if you're black and gay, the level of discrimination you experience is higher. So we have to be active about that and we have to hold a mirror to ourselves as a community and that is very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. No community likes to be told, maybe we have a problem with racism here. But it, when you log on to Grindr, mm -hmm. apparently... As a, as a lesbian, it's not, it's not my patch. You know, no blacks, mm. no Asians. Sexual racism. Sexual racism, absolutely. So imagine being 18 and a, and a black kid going on Grindr for the first time and seeing that. I mean, it's kind of, mm -hmm. we've got to start talking about these as a community and having an adult conversation about it. Are you optimistic about the struggle for LGBTQ equality in the British? I'm very optimistic. I've been doing this work for a long time. I believe that the LGBT communities are one of the strongest groups out there. I think if we could watch each other's backs a bit more, the world would be a better place. But we are a force to be reckoned with when we are organised, and we, we are organised. The future is bright for all of us if we remain committed to the cause and don't think that it's all won yet. And also see that the struggles being experienced by our trans friends are struggles that will be extended to us. They will be. The camp lad and the butch dyke will be caught up in this new policing that says that that woman is not woman enough and that man is not man enough. I'm a massive fan of Eve Hunt. She's a real, committed, passionate campaigner for LGBT rights and I think encourages all of us to step up, not least to speak out about trans rights. Uh, we've got so many interviews, you can click on many of them there, uh, but we've got loads of interviews to come. I also really welcome your suggestions as ever, including people I don't agree with, so please leave them there. As ever, leave your comments, subscribe. I'll see you next time.